The sun is out and the weather is improving, which can only mean one thing. The holidays are almost over. If the thought of going back to school or work fills you with dread, what can you do to reset your body clocks and embrace early mornings? Young children and their grandparents often bound out of bed at dawn. But most teenagers and young adults have a delayed body clock. This means their bodies are actually programmed to wake them up after 9am and they don't start to feel sleepy until after midnight. In other words, they are natural night owls. And around one in five of us maintain this pattern as adults. If you try and wake up a teenager for a school bus at 7am, they feel like I would feel if you tried to wake me up at 4am. Pretty miserable. So what can you do to ease a night out into those earlier mornings? Firstly, make it gradual. Our body clocks can only shift by about an hour every 24 hours. So now is the time to start shifting your wake up time forward by 30 to 60 minutes. So that there's a jump of no more than an hour before your first day back. Secondly, use light to get you out of bed. We have a master clock in the brain, which is particularly sensitive to the alerting effects of natural light first thing in the morning. Bright light banishes melatonin, the hormone which signals sleep. So throw open the curtains, get outside, or in the winter, use a bright light alarm clock. Light exposure in the morning can also make you less sensitive to the alerting effects of light at night. Exercise in the morning can also nudge the body clocks forward. So go for a walk or do something more vigorous to help signal the body clocks that it's time to be alert. Food is another Zeitgeber or time giver that puts your body clocks on their daytime setting. So eat breakfast within an hour or two of waking up. To fall asleep earlier in the evening, simply reverse those last three steps. So switch off bright overhead lights and rely on uh, side lamps instead. Avoid vigorous exercise in that last hour or so before you get into bed. And try and have your evening meal at least two hours before you want to go to sleep. Most of us have heard that the light from your phones or laptops can interfere with the production of melatonin. Now this is true, but actually the effects of that low intensity light are quite weak. What's probably more important is the fact that spending time on social media or video games displaces sleep time. These activities are designed to be addictive. And when you're tired, you have less self-control. So make a plan and do your best to keep technology out of the bedroom. Lots of people reach for their phones because they're feeling anxious. So try and replace that activity with something else, perhaps some slow breathing or read a book instead until your eyelids start to feel heavy and then switch out the light. Avoid long lines, even at the weekend, because these can actually shift the body clock the other way. The more nights a week you wake up at the same time, the more your body can anticipate waking with a big burst of cortisol to propel your body out of bed. Finally, make sleep time a priority. Most teenagers need between eight and 10 hours sleep and adults need at least seven. But nobody sleeps for 100% of the time after lights out. So to get your seven hours sleep, you'll probably need seven and a half or eight hours in bed. If you want to shortcut these steps, research has actually found that going camping for a few nights away from artificial light can accelerate that sinking of your body clocks with the natural light-dark rhythm. I really hope this helps. Thanks for listening and sleep well.